Hey yo, yo, live and direct from the planet of Wall Street, uh, Soccer Senseis. We, we are joined again by our good friend Prez from Kick TV. Hey, and Pat. Yeah. Pat, also so, from Kick TV. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it's kind of like a let's say call it a somber occasion. Yeah. Uh, you know, we want to talk Champions League. Obviously, you know, big big game today. Yeah. Dortmund's uh, my, my team. Dortmund is is playing Real Madrid. And uh, you know that's great, but uh, bigger news mm -hmm. is the fact that uh, the Cosmos are gone, pretty much. And they're everything but gone. So uh, news is reporting that you know all the players have had their contracts released. Uh, majority of the front office has been per put on furlough, uh, and what that means is that it's not that they're fired, but they're not getting paid either. Um, so, I mean, it's it's not a good time to be a Cosmos fan, um, and they're all but dead. Outside of an official announcement, you know, I don't, there's not really a chance that that's not the next announcement to come out. I don't know, I don't, I don't know what they're waiting for, um, but regardless, the Cosmos of, uh, you know, the most recent iteration of the Cosmos is all but, uh, passed on. Um, and as a Cosmos fan, it kind of sucks, um, you know, but the fans are doing their best to um, help the front office staff that's been furloughed. Uh, we started a GoFundMe account to yeah, help the, this morning. Yeah, we, to help the, the, the front office that have been furloughed. Um, our goal is $10,000. We've raised 3000 in like a day and a half. Uh, thank you to our friends. Uh, around the U.S. soccer community who have helped to raise this money for people who really need it in the holiday season. Our friends from the U.K., our friends from France, our friends from Mexico who have all donated uh, to help us uh, get to this point. Yeah, so it's been a crazy, crazy few days. Nuts, nuts. Yeah, so, you know, he's not just a soccer, uh, Cosmos fan. You know, you, you've worked, you've done some stuff with This Is Cosmos Country. Yeah. You were uh, part of the uh, Borough Boys, yeah. Banda. Yeah. The Banda, yeah, oh, the Five Points. Five Points, uh, as well as my friend. Right. Yeah, 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 so. So, you got to get a little endorsed. Yeah, no, I mean, I, as far as we know, it's effectively done. Um, we're pretty much just waiting for that official announcement to do anything that we're going to do as fans. Because um, we do have plans, we're not going to just kind of lay down with this. We're going to either, we're looking into su supporter options to either save the team, purchase the team, purchase a part of the team, attract new investors to keep the team going, or if nothing else, create our own team. Um, if the club goes away completely, create our own team to uh, carry on the culture that we built in the stands and mm -hmm. that the club has built, uh, not just in these past four years, but dating back to 1971. Yeah, that's, I guess that's, that's, that's leads to our first question. Like, you know, I and mean, we all been thinking, like, what, what are you guys going to do? Like, diehard Cosmos supporters, mm -hmm. yourself, I mean, you guys yeah. let's call yourself second generation. Mm -hmm. And there's even first generation Cosmos yeah. supporters. Like, my friend, uh, I mentioned the last time, yeah. I saw him in the stands, I was like, yo, you, what, what's up? I said, yo, I'm a, what? Crazy. I love the Cosmos. I used to go to see them in the Chinese Stadium, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. What do you do? Like, do you, no, no more Cosmos. In the meantime, well, before you get you know your own club together, and you know you do, you do that, and we'll talk more about that. But do you do you support NYCFC or no? No way. No, no way. Ever. No way. Never. No way. Not definitely not Rebel. So no. Okay. No, so no. the thing is to start your own thing. Yeah, that's, which is great. It's, the, it's really the the only option for us. I mean, we being in in the world when there are many clubs, you have, you. You know, you're not really friendly. I mean, we have no enemies, but I mean, you're not really friendly with uh, the other two clubs. And it's, it's, you only get, I mean, my, the way I speak about clubs, the way I speak about my club, I only get one club. This, this is my club. Green is my color. Um, and that's, that's all I can do. I, I could never, I could never support another club. Got it. So, what, what, talk a bit more about those plans of like, to, to create, create your own club. I mean, obviously, you know, you do anything you can to support that. Yeah. Because that's a great, uh, you know, valuing things when you guys are trying to do. How do you do that? Like it's from scratch. I mean, kind of like what the yeah. way what Dens is did with uh, Stockade. I mean, I'm sure I mean, yeah. you guys should reach out to him, and we'd be more than happy to help you guys. Yeah. Do that. In I mean, it's it's worth mentioning we are we're in the preliminary stages of figuring out what to do. Whether it's a supporters trust, like I said, to to try and save the club as it is, or or you know, last worst case scenario, we are creating our own club. 
but there is still rumors of investors coming in to, to purchase the team. Um, maybe even, like, I don't know, maybe they'll come back next year somehow or in years to come. Either way, like Press said, you only get one club. We, we're Cosmos, we're Green. We are never going to support the other teams in the city, ever. Um, so what we can do is we have options, whether it's NPSL, which is um, our division. fourth division, um, you know, something between, even if there's a way we could acquire the club's B team, which plays in the fourth division, and somehow acquire that club from the, from the ownership, um, or even just creating a, a club with a similar name, like Cosmopolitans, New York, or something, play even in the Cosmopolitan Soccer League, which is a local amateur league that has um, ProRail, they get absolutely yeah, the Open Cup. It's a great league, you know, what, what matters to us at this point, um, as devastating as all this is, and as how, you know, it's never gonna be the same, but we, but it doesn't mean we, we have to never have it again. Exactly. Um, so we will try, um, it, it's in the early stages, I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but I, but I can assure you we're going to do something. something. Is this something that, um, you know, like, do you, do you guys see yourself, I know there's a lot of machinations going on behind the scenes between the USL and, uh, and the NASL when it comes to your soccer and sports, sports. Like, how did you see yourselves going to back to you to NASL or going into USL? Is that even like too preliminary to talk about? Uh, it's it's a bit it's a bit early right now. I mean, the, the 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 most important thing is to figure out how to keep our family together. You know what I mean? Because um, I mean, for us, it's not soccer isn't entertainment. It's like it's a way of life. It's uh, it's your family, it's your extended family. I mean, there are kids who come into our section, you know, who want to support our club because that's all they know. You know what I mean? These these local kids from from around Shore Stadium, you know, that would come with their parents, that would be in our section. You know, uh, whether somebody needed help within the section, and we'd all rally around them to kind of uh, help them in their personal lives. So, I mean, it's about keeping our family together, and we'll, we're really ready to do anything at this point to keep our family together. Um, we don't really care which league uh, we end up in. It's, it's it's as long as we can, as long as we can be together and sing our culture. Uh, it's about keeping our culture and keeping our language, and you know what I mean. It's keeping yeah. the green language, keeping the green culture. Yeah, it's important to, to know that we were in the NASL, and we were frankly probably a very large part of the NASL stability. Mm -hmm. But our loyalty has never been to a league, no. never will be to a league, and never will be to a federation. Never will be to anything but our team and the culture around our team. So, whether it's NASL, whether it's USL, whether it's NPSL, whether it's CSL, whether it's us playing for a pub team we name after yeah. the Cosmos, yeah. that's all that matters is that it's us and it's ours. Yeah. All right. Alice, question from the back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the major mistakes like, uh, that brought about like, this, this position? Do you think it was? Uh, really uh, high wages in terms of, because we remember great players as Marco Senna or Raul or Nico Kainsha mm -hmm. came into the squad. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, do you think in a marketing perspective, there were a lot, a lot of question marks in mm -hmm. regards to uh, yeah. um, bringing more revenue into, into the team? Yeah, I, it was a part of it. I mean, the first, first and foremost, the blame for all this, this, this nightmare falls on Seamus O'Brien um, and the ownership. Um, yeah. They did, I mean, in hindsight, yes, they. it's clear they overspent. But what they were trying to do was was to build a proper club and to prove themselves in the lower division to try and force, the force right. systematic change in the US soccer scene so that they could become equal to MLS without being in MLS, which was, uh, again, in hindsight, naive. Yeah. Um, but, it, so yeah, so they, they, they had a vision, they had a five and ten year plan, I, I suppose, that had them spending, building a very successful on the field club that they hoped would translate to a successful off the field club that would bring them to the highest level. But where they did do well on the field, thanks to Gio Sarese and the players, oh, and, and, and not, <laughs> not the owners, mm -hmm. um, we did succeed on the field, but they, all, they didn't give, give the same love and the same budget, frankly, to marketing, um, and they and they just were were frankly idiotic to stay at Hofstra as long as they did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there was opportunities in Brooklyn. I mean, it's, one of the most devastating things here is that we were supposed to play at MCU Park in Coney Island. I, I filmed I filmed the trailer for our Brooklyn yeah. announcement 
a destination in the boroughs, a place where people would be regardless, a place where we could build a, a culture, a solid culture, mm -hmm. 6,000, 7,000 people a game, right. something sustainable. But they waited too long and now we are here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just to speak on that as well, I mean, <laughs> the ownership had this idea that we create a system or we create a situation in which like like an ABA NBA where the ABA forced the NBA's hand and they had to merge and now they have all these new rules you know mm -hmm. Brooklyn the Brooklyn Nets come from the ABA um, so I mean it's like he said in hindsight it's kind of naive but I mean it just I think the fact that an entire not only just a club but now an entire league is on the fringe of death it speaks a lot to how soccer is in the USSF. There are questions that need to be answered um, because, I mean, if you look at the infighting between NASL and USL, it's been happening for years. They were together, and they split, now they might be back together again, and then the USSF had to broker a deal between the second division just to get them to play, like back in the day. So it's like, there are questions to be answered on all levels, and it's I think it's more a systemic problem than anything else. Yeah, because you, you mentioned it like with the ABA, but that's that's a flawed uh, theory because th that you know ABA like they had a lot of superpower mm -hmm. teams. They had you, know, the, you mentioned the Nets. They had yeah. also um, and they have Seattle as well. Yeah, Seattle. They had a couple other other squads that are still you know viable yeah. now. Mm -hmm. uh, Portland, I think, also. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that to me with NASL uh, kind of like the downfall, even you of you guys, is mm -hmm. that the Cosmos. Was a superpower. Like mm -hmm. they were kill, pretty much killing it, mm -hmm. killing the other teams. I mean, it wasn't as bad as Cosmos was going to point all where, mm -hmm. you know, we, I'm sure you guys saw the documentary where mm -hmm. the reason that the first uh, iteration of, of a league mm -hmm. kind of died because the uh, Cosmos had like Pele, King Naglia, mm -hmm. Beckenbauer, Carlos Alberto, and the rest of the squads in the other teams really sucked. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't as bad, but it kind of was too much of a dichotomy between what you guys were brought around and had like other other squads. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. Is that anything, anything to do with it at all? Or I, mean, um, I think that it's, I mean, it's it's probably a concern of, of other teams. Um, but when you, when, when as an NASL owner, when you buy into the NASL, you're buying into the free market. I mean, you if you in, are in the US and you want to run your club, like somebody wants to run, I don't know, Levante or Middlesbrough or anything. You want complete control of your club, how much you spend, um, you know, and things of that sort. That's the league you go to. So if a if a Tampa Bay Rowdies, which has they have a lot of money, or if a Minnesota who has a lot of money wants to come to that league and they want to go to toe to toe, I mean, I mean that that only speaks for the ownership. Like I said, these ownerships. Or as I've said before, these ownerships aren't people at, that live and breathe the game like I do, or you do, or Pat does. They're here to make a profit. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't speak to the how much of an effect us beating up on every team uh, affected the, the downfall of the NASL, um, but I can say that having people of an entire league. These are, these are, I'm not saying we're as big as MLS, but these are thousands of fans across, you know, teams across the country that are in danger of losing their club. Um, there's, there's something wrong with that, you know? Yeah, I think, I think overspending definitely hurt ourselves, but I think the presence of the Cosmos and the players we brought into the league also, in, in the, while, while we were in the league, it helped the league. It helped Indy bring in, you know, I mean, not solely, but it being, the, the presence that the Cosmos had and the profile that NASL raising. Mm -hmm. um, it raised well, before we were in the league and it raised while we were in the league. Yeah. But, you know, Indy was signing um, Torado from Torado. a Mexican player, or was it Real Hawks who had him? Carolina Real Hawks had Torado. Torado. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, Tampa had Joe Cole. Mm -hmm. uh, Miami was spending ridiculous money on, on, on good good players, but not players names or anything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there was, there was an issue in the league from the start. It was in, it was unstable and it, it, it didn't fit into the system that that U.S. soccer tried to enforce, which was very um, very MLS centric. <laughs> like yeah, and it just it, it didn't it it wasn't a system that was meant to have lower division teams playing at a close like the Cosmos were at least 
a mid-level MLS team in the yeah. past two years, and I, and I don't think that was ever supposed to be the way the lower divisions worked. Um, it's, just, it's just not stable. We're a major league country. It's not, the, it's not like Europe or South America where people are going to support the lower divisions no matter what. It, it, yeah. it took something more. What, what effect do you think, uh, or if at all, did uh, NYCFC come on, on scene have because before, before it was before LCSC came to board, if you, if you want to support soccer in New York City and you had, you know, and totally anti rebels and you didn't want to go into into Jersey, you, the only game in town was uh, the Cosmos. So you had to go out the shore, which is again an hour. I don't know if whoever's watching is, is in, in tri area. It's about an hour, an hour and a half away from yeah. the city. Yeah. So you had to go out there. But the fact that now NYCFC is here, it's right in New York Stadium. Right. You know, obviously better facilities than Shuart because Shuart. Is a is a Hofstra, Hofstra University's uh, yeah. ground. Uh, easier to get there, you know, better players, more money, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What what effect did that have? Um, it's a, that's something that I, I can speak to personally because um, I've been I've been in this soccer scene for about ten years now. I started with the Borough Boys when we were uh, effectively MLS to NYC. We were trying to make a second team, or we we're trying to get the idea in New York that. Their space for a second team. Clearly, it succeeded, um, and we worked towards that end um, since 2007 until the Cosmos were announced. When the Cosmos were announced, uh, MLS, you know, was very close to signing with the Cosmos, um, except for that the Cosmos, you know, had a different idea of, you know, how soccer is. You know, they that's just what they thought at the time. Um, when NYCFC was formed after the Cosmos decided to try to negotiate from the bottom up, um, it, 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 definitely, it definitely did more than just affect the Cosmos fandom or just soccer in NYC. It created a, a rivalry. And I wouldn't just say a rivalry in the sense of like Red Bull versus DC United. Not that kind of like rivalry where they have mutual respect. There is like God to honest hatred between fans of NYCFC and the Cosmos. People who stuck with the Cosmos because at this point, um, you had people who used to be with the Cosmos or used to be not so much with the Cosmos but more so with the Burrow Boy movement for NYC, uh, MLS to NYC. Uh, we also worked uh, with uh, MLS to Queens, that stadium that they were proposing. Um, you know, so these people on the other side of the section definitely, they like, it definitely affected the Cosmos fan of it. We definitely took a blow in terms of losing a lot of people in the section. Um, speaking frankly, I mean, if you're going to leave a club to go support another one because of stature or anything like that, do I want the section? Not really. Uh, LICFC fans, whatever, man. You have your own club, stay away from mine. No, no offense, but no. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. To, I mean, to answer the question, I, I do believe the our ownership underestimated what um, the potential of NYCFC. Yeah. Um, they, they I, I, it's who knows what happened with them denying MLS or MLS denying us. I believe they thought that they could exist um, in spite of an MLS team in New York, mm -hmm. um, and I think and I still, they, I still they still that. can. There's. There's, there's there's absolutely a lot of three, three, oh, three yeah. or more teams in this city, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but they didn't they didn't put in the work that needed to be done, and they didn't absolutely. play in the city. They didn't. They were like again, our ownership was negligent, and they yeah, they, and they, we they, pay, we're paying for it. Um, yeah, yeah, they can walk I mean, away. Staying at staying at Stewart for so long when you have some an option in the Bronx is insane. Probably. You know what I mean? Like, especially when you see you see the, the attendance figures. Drop. Exactly. Year to year. Year year. Hmm, maybe we should move. Exactly. At some point. Um, you know, as much as I do love the communities, uh, that the, the, the Hempstead community that came out in force to support the Cosmos, to be in our section, to be in our main stand, uh, whenever we played against NYCFC or Red Bull, you know, they'd show up. I appreciate them, but it wasn't. It wasn't working. The the, the attendance wasn't sustainable, uh, and we needed to move to Brooklyn much earlier, especially when we had all of the hype around us. Uh, the borough president, I remember, uh, had gone out and said, we want to bring the Cosmos to Brooklyn. Now, not only Brooklyn, but South Brooklyn. South Brooklyn is like Harlem of Manhattan, or the Harlem of Brooklyn. It's a completely different culture, mm -hmm. completely different area, 
it's its own market. You yeah. know what I mean? And South Brooklyn needs something, and that could have been us. Right. And it's now, now at this point, it's almost a missed opportunity. I thought I thought it was happening. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, I said, I, like, it was I was done. excited about it too. Yeah, like, oh, no, it was done. It was, it was more. Everyone or less was, done. man, and that's the thing. It's like I, you saw the attendance at the beginning of when the club launched. They were pretty high. They yeah. did, for for NSL, they're pretty high. We did well, and it's just people can't keep going out to Hofstra. It's so. And so the following, the following, I, I don't believe the following went down much. The but following the, the stayed, attendance, the attendance was not was going down because people just couldn't get out there. Because not only is it far, but it's expensive. The thing is, seeing the, that attendance the first year, I'm assuming that the front office's assumption was that, oh, these are people from around Sheward Stadium that are coming. No, these weren't people from around Sheward Stadium. Though that the, those people were there, these are people who trekked from Queens and Brooklyn every week for two seasons to there. come and see your club because we were something different, because we were something, we, the club, is and still is ours, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I can claim ownership to my own club, that's something different that maybe we don't have in the US. And these people started saying, well, damn, this is really difficult. This, it costs probably around 20 to 40 bucks a weekend to go to Short when they include getting out there, drinks, getting back home probably like late into the night, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's not easy to get there and it's not, it's mm -hmm. not cheap. Did the front yeah. office ever uh, offer any sort of commute, meaning buses? As, as they did. Uh, yeah, we had, the the season ticket clubs. holders were given some uh, Long Island Railroad tickets. Uh, there was a bus shuttle from the station. Like it, it, it was possible, but it was still just it was, it was always difficult. It was always. And difficult. you have to. I have to imagine part of the overspending was. I mean, every season ticket holder getting getting Long Island Railroad tickets. Is a lot of yeah, money. that's and it's not like it was like from wherever to from like. Penn Station to like Mineola. They were getting uh, from Penn Station to the end of the line. Yeah. They had like, you get how many in a pack? You got as many per game. As many per game of those tickets. Wow. That's, That's expensive, man. You have a, a comment on there. It's yeah. in Albania, I can't read it, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Shout out to Albania. <laughs> it's like, it's a star yeah. with it. Um, so yeah, so so it's like, what, what happens now? You guys, you guys are, you know, trying to re recoup. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I call it a dead leg. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, now we're just trying to recoup. I mean, it's only been like a few days. Um, um, like, we're trying to do right by the people within the club that did right by us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started a GoFundMe. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, you know, and it's, it's basically to get people who are on furlough through the holiday season. Our goal is... Ten thousand dollars, and thank you to the communities of soccer fans. What's the What's the link on that so people can? Um, maybe, yeah, maybe we could. Uh, it's It's go to this is Cosmo Country podcast. Okay, so um, go to this is Contra, uh, this is Cosmo Country dot com. Uh, the podcast has a link to the GoFundMe account. We raised three thousand dollars. Thank you to everyone involved so far, um, and we hope to get to our ten thousand dollar goal so we can you know help people in need. This is for people who work for the Cosmos that haven't yeah. been paid for yeah. three, three weeks. Months, three weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's, I mean, just to give a little bit of a, sure. the, the facts is that the um, players have been uh, let go of their contracts. Yeah. Uh, they haven't paid, the, the, the front office workers haven't been paid in three weeks, like you sorry, said. Not even three weeks, sorry, I, I misquoted that. That's three pay cycles. Three pay cycles. Well, yeah. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Um, no one sees seen tickets <laughs> for being sold, so, which is kind of like the precursor to like, yo, what's going on? Yeah. Like, you know, hello. So it's, uh, and then as I said, mentioned before, there's still a lot of talk between uh, U.S. soccer about USL and uh, NESL. So talk a little bit about that. Like, what's, what's, what's going on with that? And, and, and why, you know, again, MLS is, less, you know, is evil. Obviously, we always say that, you know, if we try to beat those out, okay, but what's going on? Okay, with so <laughs> uh, with um, USSF, has been in, t in talks with the USL and the NASL for about two weeks now. Um, and at the end of those two weeks, we were going to start getting news out of it. Uh, and the day, which was yesterday, in which we were supposed to begin receiving news, uh, USSF put out a tweet saying that the decision for league designation uh, has been put off, uh, has been delayed. Uh, I think, I'm, I'm not sure about for another week or whatever. Um, MLS has their meetings, or, or USSF has their meetings this week. Um, and Sunil Gulati was at every meeting. I know that Sunil Gulati's presidential position is up for a vote next year. 
Um, so I'm sure he's trying to uh, find a solution that gives all voting members, uh, makes all voting members happy mm -hmm. uh, in order to keep his job. Um, Sunil Gulati has been to many a Cosmos game and knows that the fandom exists, knows that the NASL fandom exists, so I'm sure he's trying to do his best. Uh, not that, I mean, it could have been avoided from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, USSF is infamously uh, non-committal to uh, ruling their federation. Uh, you know, they make the rules, but they don't enforce them. Um, you know, the camelism between the leagues, the infighting, it's, why is this happening? You go to federations all over the world. FMF, it's not the perfect federation, but, you know, everyone understands what the deal is because the FMF does work. They say, this is what soccer is, that's it. And we can't, the fact that we have to wait for the Federation to figure out what they're doing is kind of like ridiculous. And just a little bit of background, basically what, what they're discussing, and, and uh, they can't get <laughs> so straight, is that they want to know, okay, is, is right now it's MLS, uh, yeah, NASL, NASL, and USL. For a second and third. Yeah, yeah for a second and third. So the, what the USL is trying to do is say, listen, right now we're, we're stronger than the NASL and they are. Mm -hmm. uh, so they want to become second division instead of third division, which would make the NASL third division pretty much killing it. Yep. Because I mean, the, the biggest uh, the, the biggest guy they had were the Cosmos, and yep. now if they go, yep. then a lot of these other other squads are going to want to go to the USL. Yep. Because and a lot of players. a lot of a lot of U uh, NASL squads have moved to USL yep. and subsequently put in MLS bids. Um, you know, it's it's very difficult to be a lower league. Uh, club because you feel this constant pressure to do better, to get more revenue, to do all of these things, and when you see that there's so much instability, you look at Tampa, you know, they just put out an MLS bid yesterday, uh, Railhawks put out an MLS bid this week, um, you know, look at Atlanta, Silverbacks have to die, and then Atlanta United exists, look at Minnesota, um, they were going to try to resist an MLS bid, but, um, I, I, allegedly, there were threats uh, that the MLS was going to team up with the Vikings, thusly making them irrelevant, so, you know, forcing their hand. Um, I mean, it, it's very difficult. And, and, I mean, it's sad that it had to be my club that is the sacrificial lamb in order to bring these issues to light, because I've never seen so much press around the struggles of second division clubs. I mean, I wish it wasn't my club. That, that had to die for, for, for all of this to happen, but I mean, hopefully in the future, maybe maybe there'll be some sort of resolution to this. And final question, I mean, I, you mentioned it and I saw it in, in an article about the fact that MLS had uh, invited the, the Cosmos to become part of it, which I, yeah. you know, to me was, mm -hmm. I was shocking. I'm like, wait, so they got invited and they turned down because mm -hmm. To me, I, it just seemed that way. And when he said, "Here, here's a check for hundred million dollars. Goodbye." Not only hundred million. Dollars. So what? So, what, what yeah. happened with that? Um, the MLS, you know, said, "Hey, you know, here's a hundred million dollars. This is our fee to get in our league." Um, we said, "Okay, but if we're giving you a hundred million dollars, there has to be some sort of give and take." Uh, and we were in the midst of negotiating. Um, our, you know, our MLS bid before MLS stepped away from the table uh, because someone had whispered in their ear, hey, Yankees in uh, Manchester City are offering you $400 million. So it's not, they're not, the ML NYCFC hasn't paid $100 million. They're paying $400 million plus whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a bidding process. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's difficult to kind of digest looking back on it, um, but that's yeah, just the way the cards turned. I mean, is that you really mean yeah, no, I mean, uh, the whole saga between Cosmos and MLS, there was a point there where it was, it it's was, close. anyone would have, it was like, everyone thought the Cosmos were going to be MLS. Ownership stepped away um, for their own reasons. They wanted full control of the brand. That's so well. When you sell to MLS, you sell 51 percent of percent share um they want to be independent they they trusted the, 
the strength of the brand, which is, is strong, but not strong enough to compete probably with two first division sides yeah. in the city. Um, so yeah, it's, it, I mean, I have no regrets. No, I don't I, have no I, regrets. I loved being an independent club. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I have a lot of disagreements and a lot of, honestly, bad feelings towards MLS, but I, I, I still watch the league. I still feel like it's, I feel like I like to be a part of the American soccer scene, but I, would I like to, yeah. to as my own club, and being second division was worth being independent. Yeah. Um, but it all falls back to, again, Seamus messing up on several levels, yeah. which now have us in this situation. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very difficult to kind of like look at my club and see it being dragged through the mud, but I don't have any regrets, and you know, if I had to do this again, I absolutely would. Yeah, I would do things a smidge differently, but I would still vie for our independence because it becomes so much of my our identity. Um, I say it many times. Uh, I attribute a lot of who I am to that club. I got this job because of that club. We both got our jobs because of this club. The way I walk, the way I talk, the clothes I wear, the friends I keep are all from being a green. Um, and I can't put a price on that. Uh, so yes, um, I would do everything the same way. Yeah, I don't think anybody's dragging oh. the through the club because they, they they just sad. I mean, it's just a sad. Thing. Oh yeah, you know. There there's, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of like city fans. Are city great. fans are great. I mean, they about that. <laughs> oh yeah, I, of course they would be because I mean of course because if, if, if for some reason NYCFC went out of this, you guys would be a little you know. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Smidge. That was funny. If it's, we beat him, we beat him twice. Maybe we beat him twice. <laughs> yeah, you go to, you go to, go to bed with that one. I don't know. So, yeah. yeah. Final questions, Alice. You have anything? You want to we well, final question is, um, you said you would do something different. Uh, I, I read an article that the owner had somehow ties with traffic, with the uh, marketing agency yeah. that's been, uh, yeah. that's, that's been, I guess, alongside Seb Ladder. Yeah. It's, uh, there's, a, there's, an op there's an open case mm -hmm. regarding them and mm -hmm. some money being on here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, do you think that he was the major cause of it. Do you think that he came into the squad to make some sort of any schemes that the FBI is not poking on? Um, if, if it was up to you, wouldn't it be a better model for a New York Cosmos club, as big as they are, to have a sort of uh, to have a sort of organization similar to Barcelona, where I guess, or the Green Bay Packers mm -hmm. in, the, in the NFL, where every sort of every fan owns his particular share? Would that have worked better? Yeah, that's that's. I mean, if this is truly the end, that is where we hope to go. I don't believe. I I honestly, as much as I want to work for it, and I believe it can work in the lower levels, lower like quite lower divisions. I don't know if U.S. soccer economy is at the point yet where that's viable. Um, but yeah, I have nothing good to say about Seamus O'Brien, the owner of the Cosmos. He he took something beautiful and it. and destroyed it um, for his own. Greed, his own interests, you know, his TV channel, a whole different thing. But uh, hopefully, we can save the legacy of the club um, by in that way, by having it owned by the people that care about it the most, care about it sentimentally and not um, financially, not for uh, bucks. Yeah. So. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us again. You know, uh, definitely with you guys. I mean, it's, it's it's painful. It's losing. You know, like so. I was reading the where uh, you blog. You like you're losing a limb, and it's, it is. Yeah. So you know, we definitely are with you guys. Uh, as fellow Cosmos fans, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Appreciate it. So, yeah. Awesome. Sorry, Appreciate you guys. Peace. All right, you guys. Sorry, Sensei's keep it locked.